Let's earn a free Alteryx certification. It is test time. Hello, Alteryx people. I am Albert Bellamy, and this is the 30 day Alteryx Core Challenge. What are we going to do today? It is time to take our third overall certification test. This will be the second of the core micro credentials. This one is data preparation. So what I'm gonna do with you is I will take you through the data prep test study guide. I will talk to you about the test itself, some recommendations, best practices, things you need to focus on. And then after that, we're gonna do a weekly challenge together real quick, nice simple one. It is representative of the kind of things you're gonna be expected to do on this test. So at the end of all of this, you should be well equipped based on the things that we've learned so far and what we review here today to go take that test on your own. So let's get to it. Let me share the study guide and we'll do that first. There we go. All right, let me, okay. So scrolling up to the top here, highly recommend you go download this study guide and take a look at it yourself. Um, so this is available through the certifications page. If you go to test resources, you'll find all of the study guides there. So it starts out with the exam overview. Now this one is 45 minutes. There are 40 questions. So it's not a time crunch, but you certainly don't have time to dilly dally like maybe you did on the previous two tests, the foundational micro cert and the, um, the general knowledge test. So there's more rigorous questions on this one. You're gonna have to think a little bit harder. So 40 questions in 45 minutes, it's, it's not a ton of time, it's enough. But uh, yeah, don't, don't kind of dawdle or dwell on any one question. If you're looking up more than a couple, you're probably wasting time. All right, you can do one attempt every seven days, that's true of all of the tests. Point values, always the same, but let's reiterate. Multiple choice, you're gonna get one point. Matching and multiple, multiple response, you are gonna get one point for each of those, but you can get partial credit for those. Multiple choice, it's just binary. You get the right answer or the wrong answer. And then practical application. There are some practical application questions on this test. They are quite simple. Only a couple of tools will be involved. We don't really, this test isn't over all that many tools. It's really mostly the data input and output and the data prep tools. We'll see a list of those in a second. But really, there aren't that many we can play with to use on this test. So the, the practical application questions are quite simple. I expect on the third and fourth tests coming up, they're going to get a little more involved. But for this, pretty simple. And you'll get your Credly badge and all good things. You can show it off on LinkedIn. Because if it's not on LinkedIn, did it really happen? Probably not. All right. Actually, before we get going, where's my post-it note? Ah, I didn't bring it up. So, CB, Kratika, and, dang it. So, there are three new joins to the challenge. They are highly motivated. I will uh, get the names and give them a shout out in the post along with this. But yeah, the three of you, thanks for the subscriptions. Thanks for the engagement on LinkedIn. Great to see you involved. And they're, they're trying to go turbo mode. They're trying to go through this in 14 days. So best of luck to you. It is definitely doable. Okay, tools on the exam. Obviously we have all four tools in the input output that are eligible for this. There are other input output tools, maps and whatnot. But browse tool, input data, output data, and text input. Here's what I suggest you focus on from these tools. Number one with the browse tool. Focus on the data quality bars. I know that those up here in some other tools, there are gonna be questions on what do the colors mean? Uh, what what do you, can you expect to find with the browse tool? Also, there's some stuff on how can you find statistical measures, measures of central tendency. It's there in the browse tool. So make sure you know how to use those, how to interpret those statistics. 
input data, there's going to be questions on how you input specific things. So don't just get stuck in a rut where you're always bringing in CSVs. So all you know how to do is bring in CSVs. You really need to know how to bring in all the files. What does a relative and an absolute file path look like? Um, and that sort of thing. And then also the configuration of input data. Uh, delimiters, when, when do they come up? How can you reconfigure things? A lot of times we get used to input data and we just auto configure. It's all good, it's ready to go. There are configuration options on the input data tools and sometimes they are needed. From a guy that has truncated long strings with the uh, preset options on CSV files before, 255 characters is not always enough. I'm here to tell you. Sometimes you have to actually go mess with those preset configurations. So good to know. Output data. Focus on how to output, um, how you append or prepend a name to a file name or a sheet name. What do those options do? What do they rename? When you output to an Excel workbook and you say, I want a different sheet per value in this column, how do you configure that? So you need to do a bit of a deep dive on output data and the configuration there. Text inputs, pretty simple. Um, don't see a lot of need to focus on that. For the data prep tools, data cleansing, focus on that. What are the different options? What are they gonna do? Test them out. So take a dirty data string and take out the punctuation, take out the numbers. What happens? What does your string look like after that? What are the things that data cleansing can and can't do? Filter, you need to focus on obviously basic and complex filters. What do they do? How do you work operators? Or, and, those sort of things. How does that affect what kind of data you're gonna get? So you're gonna see questions with all of these tools where it says, here are your inputs. What tool configuration will produce this output? So you'll get that where you have to put the kind of the meat in the sandwich. What's, what's the configuration, what's the tool option that will get you from start to finish of this? Then they're gonna kind of flip it on its head. They're gonna say, here are your inputs. Given this tool configuration, what output will you see? So you need to understand the interplay between configuration of tools and what the output is actually gonna look like. That's doubly true for filter and formula. Really need to know those kind of forwards and backwards. With formula, it's just the simple formulas. They're not gonna hit you with anything weird like spatial or financial stuff. It's making, uh, making equations, doing some simple string functions, get word, find string, that sort of thing. You need to remember that position is zero based and length is one based. So position zero is the first position. Just make sure of, that you understand that and how that's applied. Sample, you need to understand how sample works. What are the options by which you can sample? How does a group by affect the sample? Look into that. The select tool, you need to know the major functions of the select tool. What does the select tool do? Well, it selects and deselects. It reorders columns. It renames columns. It can change data types under certain circumstances. Understand when you can and cannot change a date or a time data type. If it's in proper Alteryx format, you can change it with a select tool. If it's not, you're gonna null out the value. You need a date time tool. So know that. Unique, how does unique work with a single field being uh, being configured for the unique, how does it work with multiple fields, all of that sort of thing. And then sort, what's sort going to do? Focus on dictionary order. Dictionary order can be tricky. When you sort strings or when you sort numbers as strings, what's the difference when you sort with or without dictionary order? That's a tricky question. Okay, so those are the tools. What else do we have? Journey to certification success. success. Okay. If you've done the learning path stuff that we've covered up until this point, you should be set as far as general knowledge. The practice exam is quite useful. It's 15 questions, I think. Super quick to breeze through that. It's going to give you a good idea of the type of questions you'll see on the test. The interface is not the same. It doesn't take you into the actual testing platform. It's just in that kind of learning path, cartoony, data camp type uh, learning interface. The other thing is 
on the practice exam, there are no prac apps. There's no, there's no interface to download a data set or anything like that. It's all just the multiple choice, uh, multi-choice, multi-select question type thing. So to practice for the prac apps, you really need to do a couple of weekly challenges. The ones that we've done so far have been good. We'll do another one here in a moment. And those are what you can focus on to get ready for the prac apps. And then get in there and take the test. Um, nothing to it but to do it, as they say. So exam resources, yep, 15 questions on the practice exam, cool. One tool examples, recommend you go through those, especially those things I just highlighted. Um, make sure you go in data input, data output. You may not be familiar with those configuration options, so look into those. Tool mastery index, learning resources, absolutely. Okay, so let's go into the areas of focus. We've got 40 questions. Area one, reading and writing data, text input, navigate data connections, input output data options. That's 20%, 20% of 40, that's eight questions. Eight full questions and really there's, there's not really too much to talk about with text input. So when it says reading and writing data, it's not talking about the browse tool there. Well, that may be included, but you, you've got many questions on input and output. There's only so many things they can ask you about the, the kind of auto configure options. They're gonna ask you about special configuration options. So, so get into those. Interpreting common data types, it's mostly as far as what are you changing with the select tool? Um, what, where can you find metadata? That's a good one. Um, you go into the results pane and you change that little toggle from data to metadata. Make sure that you know that. What information can you find in metadata? So we've gone beyond the definition of the data types into how do we use them? How do they affect our data stream? And how can you change them? All of that is covered in this section. Cleanse data using the data cleansing tool. That is a biggie. Look at that, 18% of the test. So seven or eight questions just on the data cleansing tool alone. You will have questions that say, which of the following tools can create this effect? And it will be a multiple answer. It will be, you know, and, and it prescribes, the questions won't say two or more, it'll say select two, select three. So it's really kind of gives you a little bit of help. Hey, you're looking for three answers here. You're looking for two answers here, easy enough. Building formulas. So reference formulas, conditional statement and indexes. You need to understand what the formula tool can do. You need to understand the very basics. So mathematical formulas, kind of what you're used to with Excel. And yeah, conditional statement is probably the toughest thing you're gonna have to do on this test. So just understand how the conditional statement works. If C, then T, else F, and if. That's your syntax. C is your conditional statement. So if total pay is greater than 100,000, then the person is a big spender. Else, person is little spender. And if. Make sure you understand the syntax of the conditional statements. Make sure you understand what they're going to do, what they're going to test for. Watch your, you know, is it greater than or is it greater than or equal to? That'll snag you. So that's formulas. And that's 25%. So that's fully 10 questions of the test just on formulas. Focus your attention there. And then another 22%, so what, nine questions on filtering and arranging data, select, select record, sort, filter, unique, and sample. Okay, so I think you know where to focus your efforts there. That, that's the weights on the test. The cut line for this test is 65%. That is not tremendously difficult. I mean, just think about that. That's what... How many of the points do you need for that? 24, 26, 26 points out of 40. Not terribly difficult. So I hope that you can pass this test. If you don't, no shame, wait a week, take it again, but we should move on. There's no prerequisite to pass this test in order to take the next test. So I would say, hey, if you happen to fail it, put a pin in it, do a good self-assessment on what you did wrong and what you need to review. Table that for a day or two. Let's move on to the next study section and the next test. 
and then just be ready for this test again. I, I would say if you take another test, you pass that one, you come back to this one, it's going to seem easy by comparison. Okay. So we're good with the study guide. Yep, and that's where you download it. All right. Now, this here is Weekly Challenge 348. And is a very simple one. I ran through it a little bit earlier. All we're doing is we are cleaning and kind of modifying a, a, a list of names. And this list of names is poorly formatted. Let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So you can see down here the list of names. So the first name we have uh, Borel Gomez, comma, Juana. And then the next one is Ros Rosalinda Lobos, or Rosalinda Cobos, sorry. Thought I'd see Lobos there. Some of the names are last name, comma, first name, or last names, comma, first name. Some of the names are first name, last name, no comma. So we have it kind of nicely separated out there. Does it have a comma? Does it not have a comma? What we want is a list where it is first name, last name, or first name, last names, or first name, middle, last, whatever. The names in order from first to last. And we want it alpha by first name. So here is our planned output. We've got Adrian uh, Maximilia Orozco, Adrian Rodriguez, Adriana Quinones. So we've got to sort them in that order. So a couple of things we've got to do. What I like to do when I first find a weekly challenge or data problem of any kind, just mental map. Just think of what, what needs to be done here. So what is the problem? And here, if you look at your data quality bars, you can see that we also have a lot of nulls there. So at some point, we're going to have to get rid of the null values. We've got null columns here. We've got null rows. It's just kind of a mess. But then what we need to do with these names is sort out, okay, if it's last name, comma, first name, we've got to, first of all, we've got to get rid of that comma. We've got to parse the names out. We've got to flip them around. And then we've got to differentiate between the ones that are in uh, proper order and the ones that aren't. A couple of different ways we can crack this nut. We could filter it first and clean up the data set, select out these null columns, maybe run a data cleaning on everything. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead. It's often a good idea just to go ahead and clean up your data set right off the bat. It's obviously a small data set. So we're not super concerned with the size of the data. This isn't a million rows. It's not something where, come on, let's not go white screen of death on me. Mm. And we did. Neato. Okay, let's let her rip over again. I may have to pause this. Matter of fact, I'm going to pause this and come back when I sort out what's going on with my computer. Okay, I'm back. So I accomplished a couple of things in the interim. Number one, refreshed my creaky old laptop here in the Major Data Studio in the game room of the Bellamy CP. So we got that. I also downloaded Zoomit, which I've been missing. It's on my work computer. It's not on this creaky old laptop. So now I have Zoomit available to zoom in and show different things. And also, the name that I couldn't remember is Ruby. Ruby, great to see you on these videos and the challenge. So keep posting your stuff. I want to see you when you earn those certificates, all three of you. Ruby, Kratika, I believe, and Sibi. If I'm not saying Sibi right, or if it's not Sibi, let me know. Okay. So here we are. We have run the workflow again. Slightly messy data set. Let's start by cleaning it up. Don't crush my processing power, silly data cleansing tool. If you don't know the data cleansing tool is a processing power hog because it has a massive workflow or macro underlying it. If you want to see the matrix, right click on that thing and go to show macro. It's weird. Okay, so data cleansing, we want to remove null rows, remove null columns. Don't do nothing else. Let's run it. Neat. So we have a much cleaner data set. We only have 99 records now. We don't have all these empty columns over here. 
and we were ready to do some processing. One other thing, if your data set was a little bit larger and you don't really need to go back and revisit this, we really don't want the data cleansing step to run every time, right click on it, select cache and run workflow. It's gonna run one more time and then it's gonna put these little Sonic the Hedgehog bubbles around all of this stuff so that you can't really dig into them and reconfigure them, but they also don't need to run again. So that's a good thing. All right, every time you run the workflow now until you mess with these tools, it's just gonna run from that last tool you cached, which is the data. So we connect things off for that. It's holding that data in memory and sending it forward from there. Cool. So what's the next thing we've gotta do now that we've cleaned everything up? Well, let's figure out We've got last name, comma, first name. What do we do with those? What's a way that we can differentiate those from the ones that are our first and last? The idea that I had was we can run a text to columns on this thing. We know how to do that. Now, text to columns is not on this data prep test, but you do need to know it eventually anyway. So we're going to use it because we have learned it. Text to columns. Every name that is last name dot first or last name comma first, it's, it's either two names or one name or it's first and middle or whatever, but there's always a comma delimiting last from first. So you don't need to worry about how many words there are. That's why this is a good option rather than using like a formula or something like that. You don't need to um, worry about how many words there are before or after the comma. The comma is an absolute delimiter. We are going to delimit the subscriber field on the comma. We are going to split to columns and we only need two. Let's go ahead and, you know, I'm going to stop doing control R because I didn't bring my extra keyboard up. So I'm like reaching up here, putting my hand right in the camera every time. And it's weird. So click run. And what do we have? Okay. So now we've got some things that happen. And this is maybe why we probably should have. Yeah. Maybe could have kept the data cleansing step for after this because now we've got leading and trailing spaces. No worries, we can deal with it. We'll just uh, clean it up in a formula. So what we have is anybody that had last name comma first is now still last name first name, but the first name is in its own column or first names, first and middle. If they were first then last, there's no comma, so it didn't text a column at all. What I mean is here you can see, there's zoom it. Here you can see Borel Gomez Juana, last name comma first, now has last name right here, first name right here. I can use the typing function too. Matter of fact, let's do that. Oof. Last, how awesome is that? First, if they had a comma in their name, this column here, if I do, if I go D back to draw, no, nah, won't do it, okay. This column one is now the last name column or the whole name column. So we're gonna base off of that and do a conditional formula to put everything into that column. And then first name, um, we're just we're just gonna build with that. The only thing we've got to do with first name is we've got to trim those spaces. So let's do that. That's a good string function. We can work with that. All right, escape out of that. Let's bring down a formula and let's kill two really two birds with two stones. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cleanse this column. Now you could text the columns first, leave the data cleansing for afterwards, get rid of null rows, no col null columns, and get rid of leading and trailing spaces in that now first name column. I went the other way, various ways to crack the nut on this one. Let's go column two. We need to trim the string is column two. Oh, why? It doesn't say column. It just says two. Silly boy. There we go. All right, was acting all crazy. Two and what we need to trim off of it is just the space. So let's just go quotation mark, space, quotation mark, and we're good. Now, because I just wanna see, make sure that it worked, because we're demonstrating here, let's go ahead and run it. We click on the output anchor there, and now we have, obviously we've got a lot of nulls. If you go on the 
Go in the data quality bar here. We've got some nulls because if they're first name, first name, space, last name, if they're properly configured, then they didn't text the columns into that second column. But 65, almost two thirds of them were last name, comma, first name. So we've got a first name value here, but we don't have any red left. So there's no, there's no red there. So there's no more leading or trailing spaces. So we cleaned it up properly. Let's proceed. We've got more to do. Now we need to set up how do we, um, how do we reconfigure these names so that they're appropriate, so that they're all first name, space, last name. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and modify the subscriber column because that's what we need to be in eventually. If you look at the output here, it's fixing the subscriber column. We're just going to go ahead and modify the subscriber column, but we're just going to put all of this junk over here in column one and column two back into the subscriber column. And the way we're going to do that is with a conditional expression. So go if it's going to be a simple conditional. So you only need the one condition. And then what I always want to do is put each expression on its own line because it's just neater and easier to read. First things first, what is our conditional expression? The test to see how you need to sort these names is if they are populated or null in column two. If column two is populated, then the original name was last name comma first, and you need to reorder it. Because right now we've got last name in column one and first name in column two. So we gotta recombine those, switch them around and put them back in the subscriber column. If column two is null, that means the name was correct as it was first displayed, so we can just leave the value that's currently in the subscriber column. Let's figure our conditional on that. So our conditional is, is null two. If column two is null, then what? Subscriber needs to be subscriber. See that? If column two is null, then subscriber was correct in the first place and we're good. If column two is not null, if it's populated, then we need to switch two and one and make that subscriber. So subscriber needs to be square bracket, dopey, two. If I, if I say some insulting expression, I'm talking to myself. It's, it's my lack of self-love, plus one. There we go. Now, what do we notice here? What's the problem that we see? right here. It's not Juana Boreal, it's Juana Boreal. So it's two names, we don't have a space there. So we cleaned up the leading and trailing spaces, which is good because they were leading spaces, so it wouldn't have helped us. But now we need a space between the first and first, middle, and last name. So instead of just two plus one, we need a two plus, quotation mark, space, plus one. And then you can see in the data preview, now our lady Juana has proper spaces between her names. So our data preview is good, our data is gonna look good. All right, let's give it a run and see what it looks like. Our error resolves. And we have, indeed we have Juana Borreo Gomez in the proper order with the proper spaces. Oscar Daniel De Leon, same thing, proper order, proper spaces. That looks properly formatted. Now it's time to clean stuff up. How do we get rid of these now useless columns one and column two? The trusty old select tool. Let's drop column one and column two. Easy enough. Let's just, we don't need to look at that. We know that that worked. Throw caution to the wind, just keep building the workflow drop the sort tool in there because we got to go alpha by first name. Well, now we've got first names first everywhere, so alpha is going to be good. The subscriber column, which is our only, remain, our only remaining column, we need to go ascending is right, so I don't know why I even clicked that. Let's go Ultrix quick draw, okay? This is a trick I do at Inspire. Ultrix quick draw is I count to three, and you put a hotkey, a browse tool, and run the workflow as fast as you can. So one, two, three, control shift B, control R. Everybody good? All right, let's give it a try. Alteryx quick draw on three. 
One, two, three. Control Shift V, Control R. That was quick. I felt smooth. All right. So we have first three, Adrian, Adrian, and Adriana. And then fourth is Aid. I don't know how to pronounce that. Aid. Suppose in Hispanic languages, Romance languages, every letter is pronounced. So it's Aide. Aide. Okay. And then there's an Albert. Love it. All right. So Adrian, Adrian, Adriana, Aide, Albert. Same for, if these are Hispanic names, I don't know why it's not Alberto, but anyway, I like it. All right, so we've got the desired, and let's just match up. Obviously, we got one field, 99 records. Official answer is one field, 99 records. That is it. Rounds complete. Challenge 348 is done. Folks, if you followed along with that with me, go get credit for doing the weekly challenge. Take a screenshot of that. Save the file. Go drop it in the weekly challenge uh, in under challenge 348 and your community wasta your street cred will increase you'll get points you'll move up in the little magnetar and asteroid and all the the uh, constellation type ranks all good things all right if you have questions about anything about the test about the study guide about the weekly challenge let me know Drop your comments below this video. Come find me on LinkedIn. Please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, come follow me on LinkedIn. Send me a connection. If you're doing the challenge, I will happily connect with you. Just send me a message. That's all I ask. You should always send a message with your connection requests. But send me a message and tell me you're doing the challenge, and I'll connect with you right off the bat. So what did we do here today? Let me kill the screen share. And just chat. What do we do? We looked over the study guide. We talked about the test. We went through the tools that you'll need to use. We went through all of the things that will be on the test. Great success. What are we going to do next time? Well, I expect you to go past the test. First of all, I expect you to hit me up either on YouTube or LinkedIn and let me know that you passed the test. Or if you didn't pass the test, what'd you do wrong? And let's do an assessment and we'll figure out how to go forward. What are we gonna do on the next video? We have one more major study section to do. So I close this a little too quickly. So on our learning path, still the getting started learning path, we have one more, and I think it's core topics two or something like that. What is the exact name? So we did core topics did we? Functions? Yeah, that's the formulas one. Okay, so core topics is the last one we did. We have the next section is called continuing core topics. Let me reshare real quick. So we're continuing core topics. Not that silly. Okay, so now we're going to get into some, some more difficult tools to use. We've got all the simple stuff, basically everything off of the favorite stool palette we have done. We're going to get into some kind of weirder ones. And hey, if you don't, if you want to skip ahead and do the writing data, I guess we didn't do writing data tools earlier on. My bad. If you want to skip ahead and do writing data, that will cover some of the things that may be challenging in configuring how to do individual sheets. So if, if I punted that one, I will revise it for future versions. But Go through um, VLOOKUPs. They're not VLOOKUPs anymore. It's XLOOKUP, all right? XLOOKUPs in Designer. Anyway, lookup functions in Designer, the find replace tool is the replacement for that, pardon the pun. Append fields can be a little tricky. It's also kind of a niche use case. I don't use append fields very often. I don't really know too many people that do, but. And then transpose and cross tab. These can be a little challenging. So I think we'll spend a little extra time on this. We might spend four days going through this one because I'm going to want to talk to you about transpose and cross tab and go through thoroughly into that. Let's see how much the try it. Try transpose, try cross tab. I want to see how involved these are. 
Anyway, that's what we're going to do next time. We will go over this. I expect to take four days to study that. For those of you that are on the 30-day plan, I'm just going to open this. Yes, I want to import it. Import. Yes. Those of you that are on the 30-day plan, this one will probably be the most difficult one. We got one, two, three, four. Okay, only four examples of each. It's not that bad. Okay. Now, on the test, I don't think it's super rigorous on these. They don't make you do anything wacky or weird. It's, it's pretty simple. So we've got a practice exercise. Then we have a capstone project. I expect to spend an entire video looking at the capstone project. So now I'm going further, further into the future. But um, so it's going to be a little bit before we get into the um, the data manipulation test, which I think is the next one. OK. And then we've got the last section is designer core prep, which we really don't need that much because we're taking the test piecemeal. Now, if you're taking the whole thing through and then you're going and doing the full designer core test, hey, awesome, uh, more power to you. If I'm eligible to do that, I will do that as well, and maybe I'll do a separate video on that. But a couple of days, get your test done. M Tuesday or Wednesday, I will aim to have the video out covering the next few days, continuing core topics, and we will get on that. What is our next test? It is, I don't want to speak out of turn here. So here we're doing data prep, data manipulation. There we go. So data manipulation. Say end of this week, we'll, we'll keep going. Uh-oh. We will knock out the data manipulation test. Hopefully I'm not fuzzing out too bad here. And yeah, that's it. All right, folks. I think I already kind of started into the ending sequence, but let's give it again. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment if you have questions, comments, or concerns. Go hit me up over on LinkedIn. And then I suppose there's nothing left to say, but follow me, folks. I'll make you a genuine Alteryx hero just like me.